way up, I feel blessed. I'm way up, I feel blessed. Hey friends. All right, all right, we made it. We did it. Uh, it happened. <laughs> I had a, I got a knock on the door like right as I was going live and then I'm just like, oh, I need to pour a drink and then I need to do a bunch of stuff. So it's, I got some kombucha today. I have uh, drank a lot of coffee. So woke up to coffee, went, out with my good friend Alex Blount and got some coffee, uh, which was pretty great. And I also not only got a coffee, but I also had a macchiato and now I'm just really hopped up. So now drinking some kombucha from a growler because there's a place nearby that fills up growlers. I got this from the Caribbean Dev Conference last year. It's pretty awesome from uh, the Megsoft team, which is great. Yeah. And let's see, I'm trying out something new. Uh, let me see if this thing, I don't know if this thing works. I'm trying to figure out if I could do some live captions using my, oh, there we go. Uh, that actually works. Okay, so, I have this button. Let's see if I can do this button. Streaming, 
commands, captions. And I'm going to see if this captioning works. Try something new. It's actually kind of working. I'm probably going to run out of Azure credits. <laughs> uh, but we'll see if that works or not. Uh, you can join that up and you can get it translated into your language, which is kind of cool. See if that if that works or not. Um, kind of giving it a go. Yeah, I, I want them to sell this t-shirt. That'd be cool. Will that work on YouTube videos? Well, so this one's just using my the captioner stuff that I did. It's not really embedding it into the source, though. So it's just like in the browser uh, in general. And then YouTube does their own machine translations on stuff later, right? So... Um, I'm way up, I feel blessed. McCoy, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. So I was trying to figure out some ways of being a little bit more inclusive on the stream. And talk to me, Gooseman has his own built-in service that uses, I think, maybe Google APIs, you know, uh, to do it. But the problem is you sort of, it's not built into the stream. It's like his own extension. So I've been thinking about building an extension that will uh, allow you to come in and then uh, maybe tap on a button and then that connects to the website um, under the over the under the hood and then that's all signal R coming in and whatnot but you could at least follow along because everything's going to be a little bit delayed but in this instance this should work so if you go let's go over to I need to change a bunch of stuff around, but I was figured I'd give it a test. Uh, let's see here. Um, surface. It's aka.ms slash ots live captions. Oop. How good it is. And I can join the session. There you go. Looks pretty good. And then you can just follow along. So if you have that off to the side or whatever, you could kind of make that follow. But I think here I could easily make this an extension and you just boot this up on your computer. It ties in, try to make it really easy for people to, to use. I think there's some work that needs to go into this website though. So it sort of stops at some point, but it keeps scrolling, which is kind of nice. But, you know, in my ever quest to try to make the stream even more uh, I have request. <laughs> uh, uh, that's pretty great. Uh, to make it more inclusive, it'd be nice without paying for professionals. Oh, thank you, Clint. Thank you so much for it, uh, for the bits. I appreciate that. Uh, right now, what's going on in my world is we are going to be working on some awesome stuff for Mr. Scott Hunter. And he asked me the other day to work on some demo stuff. And I figured, well, I have Friday to work on some stuff. So why not work on some stuff? And we're gonna try to combine together some some Xamarin, some, oh, who's Scott Hunter? Oh my goodness. Uh, so Scott Hunter is one of the, how do we describe Scott Hunter? Scott Hunter is, is a director of program managers, director of engineering. He is Scott Hanselman's boss. And Scott Hunter and Scott Hanselman work side by side, super close together. That's the easiest way to do it, right? And and Hunter is always doing great demos on .NET and he does the keynotes. And we're always trying to figure out a really cool demo of Xamarin that's like easy, but also shows all of .NET really working together. Uh, Cause we have tons of different demos and some are really big, some are small, but we want to make a really cool demo. So. The demo that I'm trying to put together is like a, a Blazor app, like just the default Blazor app uh, with an ASP.NET Core web API, and then consume that from a Xamarin app in some way. And then, um, and then kind of show off some hot reload features, things like that. Mm. Is good kombucha. So right now all I'm doing is installing Visual Studio 2019 preview uh, so I can use the new Blazor V3 
their view bla or not blazer but sorry the dotnet core preview 7 that just came out we'll see uh so shan rams says like eShop containers app yeah so um so eShop containers app sort of um similar yes the difference is that this demo would be very not necessarily basic but like level 150 not 100 but eShop containers is level 400 level right uh so that's the the difference there i would say that's what we're kind of trying to work on in general so now i'm just installing stuff so let's go over to my computer and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put down a just mop stuff here Back. so So what I wanted to do though, as we're waiting for Visual Studio to install, what we can do is I want to go read and figure out how to install um, .NET Core 3 Preview, whatever it is. So .NET Blog, Log, and this puppy here from my good friend, Mr. Richard Lander. Let me put that in the chat for anyone that's like checking out the blog. So right now, this is .NET Core 3 Preview 7, and you need to have this puppy installed, 16.3 Preview 1. So that's what I'm doing right here. Almost more than halfway done. I tried to do it this morning, but I forgot to press the go button before I left the house. Luckily, my internet speed is, is okay. So let's go ahead and download the installer, save as, on my desktop. That'll take not too long. Then I think that is also with the uh, Blazor. There we go. So Blazor may change, but I think you need this stuff to be here. Can I install? I don't think I can install .NET Core while this is installing. But I also want to know what versions of .NET Core I have installed. Uh, where's that at? C. Program files. .NET. SDK. Oh, okay. So this actually installed 3.0. I installed Visual Studio. And it's already there. So I don't even need to install it. That literally just happened. Which is cool. A nougat fallback. Ooh, a whole bunch of nougats in here. Hello. What you got? Look at all those. So many versions of stuff. Oh, look at these. Look at these nougats hanging out. Wow. Two gigs. All right, well, I don't need that installer then. That's good. And what I want to look up today is being able to add wash buckle e.net core 3.0. We're going to create a new app and then we're going to add wash. That's the one that you need. Wash buckle ASP.NET core. I think that's it. Hey Van, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you. Mortal, welcome to the uh, stream. Thank you for the subscription. Welcome back for month number seven. Welcome. Good to see you, buddy. Hey Matt, how's it going? Mr. Matthew. Prez. Oh, that's good. You got it working. That's awesome. Rad. Uh, very cool. Thanks. I'm glad you got it working. It's amazing. So amazing. So amazing. 
Nice. Washington Code, thank you for uh, auto hosting me. Super duper appreciate that. Uh, welcome to the pod A. All right, let's see. I'm, I'm just updating stuff. Good. Yeah, give feedback to the team. They're, we're ready. We're pushing it. I know they just shipped Hot Reload out to a bunch more people. So I also need to install it on this machine. So that's one thing I'm going to be doing today while I boot this up. Because I have it on my normal install, but I don't think it's on my preview one in general. So wash buckle. I think it is this one. Let me look at this blog net detail. I create a web API at swashbuckle swagger UI swagger gen. Ooh. I don't think I need all that information. Just this add swagger gen later. Swagger, use swagger UI. Where is my setup wiki? Oh, let's see if there's docs here somewhere. Where the docs at? Uh, oh, it's right here. Configure service. Okay, this is cool. My API v1, use swagger endpoint, use swagger u. Okay, cool. Nice. Is this done yet? So close. I did have to send a bug report, which they fixed for the past release. Nice. There's some build settings that I have to set up that aren't. Oh, good. Yeah, report that stuff. Yeah, another week in that here and there. Good. Glad you got it working. Glad you. Just, I'm assuming you got it today. So that's super rad. Super duper rad. All right, I'm just installing this thing. Yeah, I should, um, I'm going to be messing around with this, but you can follow along if anyone needs captions. Doing some captions. Cool. Is everyone else having a good Friday as we wait for Visual Studio to update? <laughs> oh, man. I can't do anything while this is happening. It's a good start to the stream today. Starting the stream by hanging out. What else can we do? Um, looking at Penny earlier. She was hanging out and then she was sleeping. And then, and then I donated some bits and then she woke up. And she's sleeping again. Which is, oh, James is around. Oh, back asleep. This is uh, Twitch stream inception here. Uh, our, uh, Matt says, no comments on... Or IoT says, no comments on VS Update, but happy with Xamarin and Android release. Yeah, I'm super happy. Startup tracing happened. Uh, that's super cool. Um, yeah, that's really exciting. Then... What else happened? I think that also had some the startup tracing good question so startup tracing you don't really need you can use it in debug but it's going to make your builds a little bit longer in general so it's not really recommended to do because you're in debug mode so you're just kind of you know you're debugging and ideally you're you know it's okay i mean i always consider debug mode to not be a true representation of what my app's going to be like in the store because the debugger's attached, it's the full runtime, things like that. And I don't think that that's really gonna be an accurate representation, but you can use it in debug mode, but it's gonna add to your build time. So that's why we really only really recommend it in the linked mode and release, things like that. Matt asks, Matthew asks, are you going to be using Android X soon? Uh, 16.2 just went stable, so it's ready It's ready for prime time in then. Yeah, no. Um, Maybe, I, I mean, I think we'll migrate Hanselman Forms over. I mean, I already did it once. Um, 
I need to start moving some packages over, but I'm gonna move slow, I think, just because I'm slow. <laughs> I'm, I'm just slow to move stuff. Finishing up. You sent a PR? Nice. Oh, I like that. Next week, I'll probably be back at it. Oh, I don't see no PR. What the heck? No PR. For shame, sir. Lies. I need to update this readme too. It's all bad. All bad. Yeah, I'll do that. I also do want to start moving my libraries, but then like, should I start moving my libraries? You probably did a different repo. Go for it. Yeah, I think Matt Matthew's just gonna go around and update Android X for every single repo in the world. Oh, Penny just got some bits. Nope. What's she doing? Eating stuff. Android. Love you, Penny. This. Oof. One, two. Unfazed. She's like, I'm just gonna come out, eat these treats. Thanks, yo. Nom nom nom. Alright, let's launch this puppy. Let's launch this puppy. <laughs> so cute. With worker services. Penny link. Penny link. Yes. Like services? Hmm. Interesting. Maybe some swizzling. Penny. Um, nom nom nom. Anyways, you can go watch Penny. You can be like over James Penny all day. All right, let me um set up something. Let me, let me do something over here real quick. I need to set up uh, reload and I need to shh secrets. So how do I do that? This manage this thing. This thing. So find this URL thing. This down. This up. Uh, settings. Walking through what I'm doing. Not reload. Boop. Why? Good. Tensions. Online. Not reload. Install. Let's see what you got for me. Um. Close. Close. There you go. Rut row. Work man. Oh, work manager. Hmm. Is that with the, uh, mm. yeah, inside of Google Guava. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I use that at all. It looks like, oh, it could just be an update to the package though. So that might be enough. So it might not even be in the other one. Interesting. Oh, I see. It was fixed in this service workaround. Oh, there's a workaround. There you go. Interesting. Oh, cool. At least I have a workaround in here. That's nice. Yeah. Boom. There's you right there. Boom. Oh, you know what? I bet in Handsome Informs we, we use that because of uh, the shiny stuff. So, bet that's it. Modify this puppy. Oop. All right. Good one, though. It's crazy. Let's add that to their test suite. Good report. So, all right, let's do this. Thanks, Jonathan Peppers. Thanks, Peppers. Jonathan Peppers, you're the best. We love you. Oh, did you see what Jonathan Peppers worked on? All right, so let's let's github.com slash Jonathan Peppers. Jonathan Peppers, hero of the world. Uh, 
he asked me if he thought something would be a good idea. And I said, yes, because it's like, John, Mr. Peppers, do you have an idea? It's probably going to be great. Uh, and it always is. So uh, one challenge that a lot of developers have had in CICD is, in, is using like new previews of builds or locking their CICD into, into it. We have an internal tool uh, that we use. I'll say the name because it's a coding. It's called Provisionator, which is really cool. <laughs> and uh, Provisionator 5 billion. I don't know what the code name is. But he was like, you know, what if we, what if I build this tool and during Hack Week? And this was Hack Week at Microsoft this week. So he built something called Boots uh, with, I think I don't know if it was just him or with JP is, or PJ as well. And this thing is freaking rad. It's a .NET global tool that helps you visx basically anything, but really for Xamarin stuff. Um, so what's cool is in Boots, it works in Azure DevOps and App Center and other things. And what it lets you do is install specific versions of Xamarin iOS or Xamarin Android or other things. And there's even an extension in the VS Marketplace. Boom, it's super duper rad. Um, really, really cool. And this works on Mac and PC because it's a .NET Global tool. So for example, you can just call these command lines, to install specific mono versions, specific Android versions, specific iOS versions, or even Xcode versions of stuff. And then he has this cool app center thing. That's like, normally you have to pick something, but what if you want a new preview, right? And you can tap on this and he'll show you the app center post clone that will install the stuff that you need. It was freaking amazing. Uh, so cool. Um, so yeah, it's super duper rad um, in general. So give that a look, especially if you're doing anything uh, in the world of CICD and you want to lock in versions, especially on hosted machines. So obviously install things, but you know, it, it's really cool. Even if you're using Cake and he shows you how to do everything, really crushed it. And IoT asks, can we have a Xamarin DevOps and App Center Twitch series? Funny you ask that. My good friend Abel Wang and I did an entire series the last few weeks um, called Mobile uh, DevOps for Mobile Developers. And it's a six part series where we do all of that from start to finish with App Center, uh, DevOps, GitHub. Super cool. That'll be coming out in the next few weeks. So subscribe to the Xamarin YouTube and the Zam Microsoft developers YouTube super cool so that is coming all professionally shot really cool stuff I'm really proud of it so all right let's do this it's not out yet it's coming it's coming so. all right, let's see all right we're gonna create oh do I have to install how do I get blazer on my is it just included now You're welcome. I mean, I'm so excited to start talking about it nonstop, uh, by the way. What's going on here? Open, 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 open. All day boots. There we go. Um, file, new project. Oh, they added it. That's brand new. I didn't even see this. There's a search in here. Oh, uh, it's so funny. I don't know if you just saw that, by the way. So if I go here, I literally just put in this feature request. That is so funny. I installed 16.2 yesterday. And... I don't know, she's a little slow. So this is the old one here. This is the new one to the left. And I literally put in a feature request that said, can I search? Boom. Let me filter those pups, right? Am I right? That's so cool. I don't know what that thing does, but maybe if you save it, I type in. Oh yeah, it does. Save, save thing. So anyways, that's super duper cool. They did it. They did it. Amazing. I'm so into that right now. Okay, so I want an ASP.NET Core web app, and I'll say um, better together. So I'm going to call this repo. 
Uh, let's create this. These are server apps. Mm. What I want? Runs inside of it. Oh. I don't know if that's the template I want, but I don't see any other template for Blazor apps, so the one I want is the two. Two of them. Where's Dan Roth when you need him? That's not the one I want. Um, okay. Th that's okay. Is it okay? Um, Laser temp. Hmm. The tools extension. This a go. Gonna... Always recreate it. Modify. Oh. Oh. Um. Cancel. It says right here that it's obsolete. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Get Blazor to simply install them from command line. Uh. Oh, okay. So. Doll. All right, so let's see if this works. The .NET new new template. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we got a Blazor server side, client side. So I want the a bunch of Xamarin templates. Cancel. Oh, I have upset it. Uh oh, not good. Let's see if I just forked my Visual Studio. Should have listened. Why is if it's obsolete, remove it. So we include some in there, all of them. Oh, ooh, 
That is not good. It just heavily upset Visual Studio. Not okay. Um, it's a good live stream today. Just debugging Visual Studio. That's good. That's good. That's good. When in doubt, repair. Let's do this though, CD. User slash mod slash desktop. So if I do dot net new blazer server side yeah blazer dot net new let me do uh make her better together uh how do you make a dirt make her better together there we go CD better together, and then we dot net new server side. Do it. Let's see if that works. Let's see what's in here. Um, not it. Dot laser. Client side, Blazor hosted. There we go. That's the one I want. Blazor hosted. Nice. That was actually good. It like caches a lot of stuff, but that would be bad. Okay, cool. Um, it's not exactly what I wanted to have happen, but so inside of here we should have a client. I'm way yep, up. I feel blessed. Server, the controller, poor guys controller. Wild genie, thank you for the follow. Super duper appreciate that. And yeah, now it's installing stuff. Cool. Cool. Cool beans. Cool. Cool. Um, uh, but but up it Just waiting, waiting. I really shouldn't have canceled the install. That was my <laughs> that was my problem. Uh, IOTS, do you maintain a global JSON for .NET Core 2.2 versus 2019 stable? Hmm. And .NET Core 3 preview for VS 20. No, I don't because now they incorporate that into the IDE. There's a checkbox that says uh, use previews when you're doing .NET Core work. Now, I would say that best practice would probably be to put a, a .NET version in like your project itself. Like if you had a many of projects, right? That would probably be ideal. But I don't do anything. Because now it's side by side doesn't work. Um, well, I think if you go into Visual Studio Preview, it has the checkbox in, and it says use preview bit, and then like it will load that up. It should at least that's what happened with me at least. Else it would default not to, but I mostly haven't done a lot of. Preview work, so find on it core tool. Hopefully, it doesn't delete that stuff. Well, let's go ahead and put this then into my live.net.
Same thing over here, and there's cabling that's going on. These are my multiple keyboard and mice. And I've moved this around a little bit, now it's a little bit different. But, and all three webcams. Because if you don't have three webcams, not a Twitch streamer. So it works really nice. I mean, I have one on my 23 inch and I have one on my 21 inch monitor. It works pretty butter. For four, I was like, for $40, I was like, what could go wrong in general? Um, here's a closer up look at it. And it goes up, it goes down, it swivels, it does the things. Yeah, I'm, but it works for me um, for what I need it for, especially just the slight changes. But uh, the thing is why I like it is because I had, hold on, let me grab them. So no, you don't have to drill it in. It's just like a clamp. It just clamps underneath it all. So it just, in fact, let me see if there's a photo of it. I really do a good job of photo. Oh, here we go. See it? You can go through the hole if you already have a hole or you can just go off to the side. And I just went off to the side, but it's like, I had this really nice you know, Dell, XPS, like monitor or whatever that monitor is. And it swivels, it does stuff. And it's super nice, it goes up, it goes down, it rotates. But the problem is this base is just so big. It's very dusty right now, but so big. So the reason I went to the monitor arm is while I like that, um, if you look at this photo, nothing is impossible. House. Thank you for the subscription. You only get one a month. You gave it to me with your Twitch Prime. Super duper appreciate that. Welcome back for four months, buddy. Um, what I like here is there's so much room underneath. That's really the benefit of the monitor arm in general. There's just so much room underneath that I can put junk or photos instead of it being up on me. I really like that. Um, yeah. This is still going. Ooh. One hour in, we almost got Visual Studio installed. But yeah, that's what I'm about. Dude, almost 2,000 followers closing in. And there's really nice monitor arms too. Just for me, it was like, couldn't really justify in my mind paying $100 for a monitor arm. Like we have a really nice one. Hey, Luis Matos, how's it going, buddy? Uh, we're we're actively currently in reinstalling Visual Studio because I went to install something and I hit cancel and then it was like no, so it was very upset at me. So now it's installing. My fault. And now we're looking at monitor arms. Well, I looked at all these monitor arms, right? Like this looked the same. It, you know, this one's plastic and pl metal and plastic. Like it has a, a plastic overlay on it. Like this bit here is all plastic. This thing, yeah, this part here is all plasticky, but it has like some nice cable management in it. It works. Yeah. I was like, I can't justify spending a hundred dollars or for like one or these dual ones. I don't know. And this one is two, right? And I thought like, oh, maybe I'll get one that will do both. But then I was like, I don't want to put something in the middle of my desk. So I wanted them off to the side. Do you have any knowledge about Clancy's hot UI library? <laughs> um, I do. Uh, Clancy's just working and prototyping some stuff for our hack pro. So it's hack week uh, here at Microsoft. And Clancy's been prototyping this for a while, but he's just been, yeah, just working on some MVU style, C sharp, what it would look like, some ideas, how you could bind things together and how it would work with you know, Xamarin, Xamarin Forms, or Skia, things like that. So it's just a little hack week project in general that he's working on um, from him. So kind of cool. It's not like a product, it's just, yeah. Oh yeah, oh man, I, I love my Dell monitor. I forget which one I have. I got it from Best Buy, but it's so good. And it's like, you know, no edge, no anything crazy. 
Oh. I apologize for uh, installing. Install day. It's reinstalling, so that's cool. But yeah, and the, the Dell monitors come with super nice stands, you know what I mean? So it's just a shame. Uh, all right, so. Well, this kind of beats the purpose of the stream, but everyone, thank you for hanging out, hanging out with me. And my captioner live stream service is to totally working, which is kind of rad, so there's that. I like that. Hmm. Well, cool. The Y Bad Dragon, Bad Dragon says I watched your YouTube live stream yesterday about Signal R and it helped prototype a demo to pitch idea. Very cool. Real time alerts. Nice. Very cool. The other thing we we do too on our slash um, Xamarin developers. There we go. We publish a bunch of the Xamarin Developer Summit videos over here. Videos. And. Look at that. There it is. Happy link address. So this one was more of a professional one with a lot of different things in it. So you can give that one a, a listen if you want some more signal R in your life. Talk about Azure Signal R service too, which is what I'm using right now for the captioner service. So, if you go to the live captions, you can see that demo action actually. And it's using Azure Functions, it's using a bunch of captioning services to see things in real time or translate it into different languages, which is really cool. I'm not sure how accurate it is in the different languages, but it's pretty neato that it'll translate it in real time. So, and that's using Signal R and Cognitive services and a bunch of other stuff. So pretty neat. Yeah, just give that a look. Um, uh, going. All right, we're at seventeen percent, which surprisingly doesn't make a lot of sense that it's at seventeen percent because here it's it's at you know fifty percent of the packages. This is install install day. How's this? This is a uh, ideal stream. Well, everyone's waiting. <laughs> oh, it says I wanted to try Signal uh, Azure Signal R, but first I have to get my subscription. Oh, uh, yeah, they're usually pretty quick about it. Uh, the cool thing is the, at least this demo that I do. Uh, it's all pretty much free because it's using Signal R and functions and the Signal R service. I'm not actually sure how much it costs. So I think after the stream, I'll be able to see how much this costs me because I'm at least talking and communicating to the service currently. So I'll be interested to see if that actually has any impact at the end of the day uh, on my bill, which I have free credit. So I can't believe 35 people are just watching me install Visual Studio. That's pretty cool. Good to go. Service book two. Ooh. Let's go get some more kombucha. Do it. Bucha, get it. Ah, that's not good. Bucha. Ugh. So we got this growler, little mirror growler, which is really nice. And it's got our kombucha in it. So it's not beer, but it's just, it just looks like. I'm just telling Heather, I probably fill this growler of kombucha because I was going to last for more than two days, but it didn't. It's coming along, but. 402 of 530 packages. Well, why be dragging you? Let me know if you have any questions about Signal R. You know, I love Signal R is Glenn. So if you have any questions, let us know. Yeah. Oh, and House, I see you now. Um, I see your message in here. So, yeah, I do like that's my favorite part 
is I'm trying to keep my desk clear, but I also bought, hold on, let me, um, you know what I also bought is I bought these little, I don't know if you can see them in that, in that thing. So they're, um, cord organizers. Is there desk, but 23%. So not that these, this is what I bought. Bought there's, there's this style of little organizers super duper helpful so good you stick them with 3m underneath and then you put the you put them in so nice you can put them like anywhere and i've been every single cord is managed this way it's so good i think i bought this huge pack very unnecessary but look at that. you put toothbrush toothbrushes up there so good all right let me burn Everybody loves a good install. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, installing .NET Core SDK. Oops. Doing it. The funniest, so this is a full repair. So the difference is I think when you do an upgrade, if there's packages that aren't touched at all, then it it is smoother. Cause I literally just updated this for like 20 minutes and it's fine. Uh, Dragon ass, I don't have any questions. I'm sure I will once I get improved, start actually implementing stuff. It is pretty straightforward. Um, ooh, yeah. Is putting the hub on a server my debug environment could access? Oh yeah, interesting. Um. I think I ran out of credits. I ran to my free tier. Look here. Yeah, my R server. Quota in. Pricing tier. So I was looking at my signal R service. Five hours per month for free. So that should be at. Stop. Oh, okay. So you get with Signal R the or the the thing. It's, what do you use? Okay, let's see. Prime Focus says they use these pups. Oh, that looks cool. I like that. That looks really nice. It's very similar, right? Yeah. I like that though. Those look cool. A little bit more uh, high end. Chicken la laksa. Chicken laksa. Chicken soup. Ooh, that looks good. Mmm, slow cooker, hello, send me the recipe, yo. I'm into that, holy smokes. Oh, I'm gonna bookmark this pup. Thanks, Donna, hey. You, I've bought you from, stuff from you green before, one of those, or generic. Those are nice. Like three M strips underneath. Right. Oh, a PowerShell installing just a little, little pop up there. A little PowerShell. Oh, got this. Calculator. Four hundred and nine. Based on size. Four oh nine. 
77%. What's important though, is that this is the it's new, new one right there. Oh, there we go. Service fabric. All right. All right. I'll clear this out. Oh, now we're talking. Now we're moving. Oh, 427 divided by 530. 80% done. Oh, 43. 62. All right. Now we're talking. Now we're moving. Now we're moving. .NET native ILC IL compiler. The CLI for, well, so that's the thing is, I think I just literally may have reinstalled all of .NET uh, core too. So I think I have a lot of packages. What is this ID not? I only code in Vim. I could use some code. Uh, but yeah. Oh, actually, let's look at the, the GitHub. Gosh. So Leibowitz put in a pull request. And in fact, we should probably link to this in the blog post because you changed one file. We should all, did we publish a list of like, here's what you probably need for Xamarin Forms applications? That would be my recommendation. Looking to migrate your hashtag Xamarin forms. Android. Hashtag Android. Android X. Only you nougats. Evowitz. But awesome. R2. Boom. Oh! <laughs> As your face pops up. And I'm live on Twitch. Noise. Legacy support v4. Do you think it's better, Matthew, if we add every little small one, or is it better to do these in these chunks? Because, um, I type in like Android X, there's all of these. I love how all of them have the same icon, but there is a lot of them, right? Like, look at all of them. Is there one that can, like, does the support V? Legacy, this one, does this contain a bunch of, yeah, little ones? No need to add everything. Add these ones. There's so many. Why is there so many? Kind of cool. There's like the you know, view model one. SQL Lite framework? Can I just use SQL? 70 of them. Jeez. Good lord. WebKit, view pager. Oh, good old view pager. Number one fan right here, view pager. And core common. So many. Emoji bundled. Get those emojis. There's a GitHub usage. Oh man, you know what my new favorite feature is? Um is that in here? Cameron Essential. Yeah, this is cool. There's like dependent repositories. Boom! But this isn't true. Like Reactive UI doesn't actually depend on Xamarin Essentials. It just uses it in a project. 
But it is kind of cool. Kind of cool. Oh. Core UWP reinstall. Big board move. That actually does organize them by. Seventy-four packages. So I'm imagining here that there's probably samples in here somewhere. I would imagine that they don't actually end on me. It does require splat though. Also, intro. Why does it require splat? Oh, I'm sorry, everybody, but we're at 68%. It's happening. I think this big one, the UWP one's big, and then the Xamarin install. I think we're like one of the last. See what else Penny's doing. Oh, still got Android or Camera X to do. Yeah, I'm excited for Camera X. I think the Nougat repo thing just looks like a repository. Oh, yeah, I think that's all it does. It just looks for the... Oh, this feed. What's up with this internet? Yeah, well this was, so this is a reinstall. That's the thing. So you wouldn't need to install that. Yeah, so that's the thing. Well, so this is just a reinstall, though. That's the that's the problem. Bye, Penny. Oh, miss one. Uh, you can, yeah. I often just watch myself. Cool. It should just go through a tunnel. Dope. Yeah, probably probably shouldn't do that. Oh, Benny. Uh, core UWP still. That's a big package. So my only fear, so here's the question, Matthew, is what happens if someone doesn't have Visual Studio 16.2? Can they build this application, question mark? You know what I mean? Like if someone has Visual Studio 2017, they will get a build error. Yeah, that's the only problem. Gotta be on that new, new, new. That makes sense. Come on, Visual Studio. Uh, 
you can, John Pepper says, you can do some MS build foo and check for 62. Oh. We do an explicit check. It's not really VS, more of a uh, version 9.4. They need that version of Xamarin Android. That makes sense. I was thinking of putting a condition on each package reference to not include. Mm. Oh, so like if you didn't have that version, don't install them. That could be uh, interesting. Yeah, because I guess if you're building an app. And you switched fully to Android. Well, I guess if you switch fully to Android X, you're going to be doing it. Th that's of interest. Oh, come on, you did. Some people dream of success while you're going to wake up and work hard at it. Nothing is impossible. Hey, Cam, good morning. How's it going, buddy? Good to see ya. Where's my... Uh... Good to see you, Kim. We are watching the Visual Studio installer reinstall Visual Studio because I was too lazy to wait for something to finish installing. So I hit cancel and then force close things and it got very, very mad at me. I'm an idiot. Now I've been waiting for an hour. Yep. Yeah, you just, you got here right in the nick of time. Just, woo. Uh, very cool. We're also, I'm trying out something, Kim. AK.ms slash Moss Live Captions. Uh, um, up, I feel blessed. Martin, thank you so much for following. Next week, Martin, I am going to be integrating video playback um, into the Handsome Informs app. So it's next week in general into the Handsome Forms application. <laughs> the Handsome Forms application. Pretty good. Uh, yeah. I do. I love. The, it's this. Uh, this is a big one. This one right here. I like to zoom in. My new favorite thing to do on a live stream. Zoom in on the installer. Next Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific. So one hour before this. Wherever, what time it is right now. One hour before. And that's going to be my main objective because last week we um, got all the back end stuff working. So now it's time for the playback. So I bet that uh, what I can do is try to just do that first and like get a screen up and working. Come on, installer. You got this. Do it. Oh, my. started it's a fun one yeah oh cool that's good Martin I like that yeah I was looking at the previous examples it didn't seem too difficult to do so i definitely need to look at it yeah, i think this uwp package is like ginormous like unloading on disk so um i've been using all my cpu disk Well, it's already downloaded. It's already down. Look right there. Download 100%. Uh, there's two networks. That's a, that's a RAM. 
So using half the RAM. What a disc guy. Oh, it finished. Okay. Ooh. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. We got past the UWP install. Putting in a CRT monitor into here. Perfect. C++ libraries. I know. Well, no, it, it jumped from 20 per 30% to 60% and then just stuck there. Open JDK. That should be installed already. Skip right over that. I think it reinstalls it though. Because I did a repair, not an update. Update fast. Oh, no, it's done. Device manager, done. Xamarin, done. Xamarin Nougat Cache, done. Done, get out of here. Or maybe the Nougat Cache is a little big. What's the best way, musical bookworm asks, what's the best way to learn Xamarin? Great question. I love questions because I have an answer for you. All you gotta do is go to there's two places that you can go today. Docs.Microsoft, boom. The best place to go. Craig Dunn and team, fantastical stuff. Walks you all through it. Look at all this. Oh, quick start right here. Boom. You can also do akit.ms slash learn dash Xamarin. Okay. And the place I would start, this is Microsoft Learn. I would start here. This one. All completely free, hands-on learning content. You even get little awards, look at that. Walks you through it. So really good content here to walk you through everything done. Look at that Nougat cash. That is some Nougat cash. Ooh. Work little Yeah, what I like about um here you can be like I'm gonna learn this new mobile app and then it walks you through sort of building it, things like this in a longer tutorial. What I like though, I really like these small tutorials. Like I wanna learn about stack layout. You walk through it, right? Next, and it kind of walks you through everything here, how to use these things and go next. And, and what's the next one? You know, label tutorial. It's kind of walk through how to use every single one of them. Super good. Super good. We also have um, dot dot net. When you go to here, this is the Xamarin homepage. Learn all about Xamarin here. If you tap on um, learn up top, you can, there's an in browser, a little tutorial, and then you can also go to mobile. There's all sorts of nice little materials, things like that. And then this is another in, lots of in browser tutorials to walk you through. This one's a little bit different. This one's one I built out. That's just like, you know, build a little click handler app, basically, which is kind of nice. You know, if you're on Mac or Windows, kind of nice. Lots of good stuff there. Oh, almost done. Hmm, Intella progress, Intella progress bar. Intella install. I agree. I will. It should do machine learning to understand how long each of those aspects take into the overall scheme based on the different machines in which it is installed on, which would be ideal. ASP.NET. I do. I like that. I'm going to take that back to the team. did uh do oh no that's that is fancy yeah 
man, that's crazy. Hey, Pickles, the dog coming in. How's it going, Penny? Hi, hi. Oh, that's cool. Nice. That's a great, great one. That's cool. Now, of course, if you add new nougats, you're going to have that, that problem, I guess. Oh, we're finishing it up. I'm so excited about life right now. One hour, 20 minutes in. We have done it. We have finished. Actually, I took a photo of Penny earlier. Snipped it out of the browser. I was like, oh, my God. Look at that dog. Look at that dog. <laughs> Look at that pooch. <sighs> Almost done. The adding improved AI for progress must be a task for Frank Kruger, yeah. The ID ignores that condition. VS tries to be clever. Uh, who is Penny? Oh, it's my best friend's dog. Penny Pickles. Up in there. Slash Penny Pickles. She streams all day, every day. It's not my dog. It's my friend's dog. She works at Twitch. She hangs out. She streams all day. You can give her bits and you can give her treats. For the bits. For the bits. Oh, come on. You got this. So, th so it doesn't work. Are you saying it doesn't work? Hmm. It's too smart. Got a new controller while we're finishing. I got a new, new uh, Oh, got a restart. Great. It's ideal. A new Switch controller. It's wired, but it has a... It has a... Uh, little head jack right there. Because my Switch, the, the thing, the microphone on top. Software. Yeah, no, after you reboot, you gotta do it. What's this button do? What's that do? Interesting. So crazy. Whoa. That was pretty good. It's not as good as the Pro Controller. Yeah, here's the problem. Yeah, That's why I use a different computer. So the problem is that I, I have that computer behind my monitor. Get out. Ugh. Because I got uh, BitLocker on it. Funny. Nice. Thanks, buddy. Can you uh, DM it to me? That way, because I'll, I'll lose it. I'll lose it in the, in the thing. Rebooting. I like that it's on your SharePoint website. Great. Doc. I know. I'm excited. I'm going to make that this weekend. It looked amazing. I love food. I was at Trader Joe's the other day and I was like getting a bunch of stuff. Or no, it's at Trader Joe's? Where was I at? Oh, I was just at a coffee shop today and I was like, I'll have this treat, I'll have this treat. And I was just like, love food. Is that a scone? I'm in. Give me the food. Then I gotta put it back down over here. have it off to the side and then I'm behind my monitors because it, it's very nice. Out of way. Mostly for cable management. Um. Yep, there we go. Let's see if this came back. Come back to me. 20 minutes? Yeah, slow cooker. That's the thing is I don't have a slow cooker anymore. I got rid of my slow cooker. But could I just do it on the stove? Question mark. But I really want to know. My computer's rebooting, so or it's it's opening every single app on my computer. <laughs> Ideal. 
Visual Studio, logging into Visual Studio. Booting Visual Studio. I might need to reinstall the hot reload. We're going to write some code today, people. Sebastian says so. Um. <sighs> Life. I just like that everyone Some is. Dream success while you're gonna wake up and work hard at it. Nothing is impossible. Ah, uh, Mr. R. To Ryan, thank you so much for the subscription. I mean, yes, that is correct. Nothing is impossible. One day we will install this thing one day we will start writing code one day but thank you for the subscription six six month streak out of seven took a break you could have been on your seven month streak just kind of since the beginning of one uh i guess eight month streak missed one probably gave a twitch prime and then it didn't transfer over I, that's what i was just installing uh actually funnily enough is that's what i was installing currently is 16.3 preview and i was installing the blazer templates and then i was like oh i'm not supposed to install the blazer templates so it got mad at me that's what literally happened blame twitch i do twitch prime is like great but then i always forget I'm like oh Nothing is, Nothing is impossible. My name is Scott Hanselman. You can find me on the internet. I may make sure I have this extension. Thank you, Clint. Thank you for the subscription coming in. Oh, it did keep my, uh, it kept my hot reload. That's good. All right, let's go back. I do deserve one of these. When you finish uh, a Visual Studio, you gotta do this. But unlike Chris, I'm not a command line guy. I love that warm, fuzzy feeling of my IDE. That's right. <laughs> uh, Multi-target. Um, I think in, they just updated that. I saw a thread on it in the Slack channel. Um, I think in 8.3, possibly this fall, 8.3. Okay, so open project better together so we did create this blazer app from the command line let's see if everything is kosher i don't know if i actually understand that everything's actually phrase um all right so we have this is what i want so we have a Controller, weather control, which should. Okay, that's the controller HTTP get. That's cool. And what is this using? Oh, it reset. Oh, it is using the latest. That's cool. Dynamic Core 3, using it is it using the latest, cool. Nice, preview seven. Yeah, told you, it's totally happening. In there. Happening, all happening. Okay, cool, so we got that. All right, so the goal of this is we're gonna create a mobile app in here. Add a new solution, mobile. <laughs> And we're gonna add a new project. And this is a pretty sure that this is gonna unfold incorrect. Mobile app. We're gonna create a better gather.mobile. Boom. We're gonna create a blank app. And 
with Android and iOS. Done. Did it unfold correctly? It did not. Need to put this in here. This in here. All right, so if I run this server, Azure Dev Spaces, I don't know what that is. That's better to get a server, okay. Well, that's kind of cool, it, like runs a client. Better to get there. It's so hot in Seattle. By hot, I mean it's really not that hot, but for us, anything over 80 is like terrible. We got server component. Cool. Then okay, this time. Okay. Then we got our Blazor app. Cool. Counter. Click, 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 click. Fetch data. Boop. Okay, cool. Sweltering. Sweltering. It's merged, but I can't use it in the latest. I don't know. It might be merged, but it might not be integrated into the latest preview. Oh, reach out to Cody uh, and ask him if there's a build to test internally. It might be super broken, but you can definitely ask him. All right, so there's our Blazor app. Uh, cool. So what we want to do now is I want to go into my server. I'm going to add a new NuGet. And we're gonna add the swash. I wanna add, I'm gonna add the swagger, swash, buckle. Buckle, boucle, swash, buckle, ASP. Right, how do I add swash? ASP net core. So Swagger JSON and that one actually has it in it. Do I need? Let's look. I'm way up. I feel blessed. Uh, Marcos.net. Thank you so much for the follow. We are trying to currently add in some Swagger UI, and let's do the 5.0 beta. Why not? Why not be on the bleeding edge of this pop? I'm into it. Are you into it? Let's install it. The version numbers are a bit confusing. Five. Swagger. So this must mean that there's an open API spec. So there's probably like multiple things. But both of these support done at core 2.0. But nothing specifically for 3.0. So it must be backwards compat. So let's go ahead in our service configs and startup CS. Ho, oh, hello. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho, that's a spicy one. That is a lot of stuff. Look at that. Do it. <laughs> Installed. All right, so we got the Swashly, Swashly bucket. Now, inside of our startup CS, it says to add. Out of configure services. So I assume anytime I copy pasta that in. V1, and I'll put in add missing usings. Say weather API. Not bring in my. Hmm. 
Interesting. Oh, so this already has MV. Under NVC. I don't know really necessarily where I need to add it, but I'm going to add it right after add NVC. Then. Hey, Secure, how's it going? Here. So, ASP.NET Core Swagger. Oh, open API info. Open. <laughs> so if I look at this thing, it's yeah, it takes in a new open API info. This week, yeah, it is Hack Week at Microsoft. Yeah, uh, so they did a whole bunch of. So I just saw a tweet go out about. All the cool stuff that uh, people brought in. So, yeah, lots of cool stuff happening. And the configure method, insert the middleware or configure. Here. Laser. Swagger. Optionally, insert this. Yeah, I want this. Now I should have a swagger definition. Ah, yes. What am I hacking on? A great question. Right now I'm working on a combination ASP.NET Core Blazor .NET Standard Xamarin demo application for Scott uh, Hunter. So the idea is how can I build a nice little sample demo that incorporates ASP.NET Core which I'll have API controllers that are consumed from an ASP or a, a Blazor application, potentially a web app, and also a Xamarin app. That's the goal. So we're just gonna, like the default Blazor app has this little weather forecast, but what I would really like to do is um, this. How do I get to the swagger? Yep, there we go. Get the swagger definition. Then try it out. There we go. Okay. So there's the swagger definition. It's running on Kestrel. The goal here is that I could take this swagger JSON. Cool. And go into this program. And say add service reference, a new open API service reference from a URL. Post that in there. It okay. I've never done this. Someone told me this could work. I'm gonna install some NuGets. Curious. So you can add a gRPC service reference or a open API service reference. So the goal is that this would generate some code for us. While I'm debugging, that would be impressive. I should probably run without debugging, maybe. Q 
curious. Alright, I think maybe I needed to not be debugging question mark. See what's going on in this folder. So that didn't change at all. Hey Lashlan, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you. No changes there. Huh. So let's shut this down. It didn't work as expected, so that's good. All right, interesting, interesting. All right. Not ideal, I don't know. Let's come back to me. That was quick. Better together, let's open this again. Let's try to run it not in debug and see if this works. Yeah, deal. I'm also kind of curious if here. Good. All right. I don't want you to update Visual Studio Code. Too late. It's happening. It's all happening. I have no control. Oh my goodness. All right, let's see here. Uh... Yet. Try that out. Okay, so let's try this again. Apparently this did not to do I don't think it saved. No, it did not. Okay, so let us run this out debugging. You could publish this back end to Azure for all intents and purposes, I guess. But the plan was to. All right. Ugh, sometimes ambient, I'll tell you. Uh, hmm. Enter layout. Good. Visual Studio starts faster when you do some of this. All right, I'm in. In Visual Studio. Okay, so we got our server running. Cool. And Blazor app open. Swagger definition open. Add. Service reference. Open API service reference. Project. Go. I think because I was debugging. It obviously locked up everything and probably got upset at me. Okay. Um. Still doing stuff. Oh, nice. Open APIs. Oh, interesting. Oh. Curious. Hmm. 
So this is some code gen stuff. I've never done this before. So I went here. I see. This generates all of the others. Where's the, so there's the open API JSON file. It does all this here. I see. Okay. So, hmm. That's of interest. So it's kind of like, hey, I have this already. But I want to add it there. Are you looking, are you hooking up the fetch the data, the real API against the sample? Yeah, so we will at some point um, hook up the API to do that. That like call a real web service. But right now the thought here is to basically point it at the swagger file. Okay. And then if I go into here, what this controller does or what the Blazor app does today, if I go into the pages fetch data, this makes an HTTP request off to get JSON async. What's that? Too short date. The date time offset. It's like it doesn't know what it is. I was hoping that it would create like the client and stuff for me. Do not know what that did? Add open API. Uh, it is now in, I, I pointed it at the URL. So there's a URL here. It's of interest that that is a date. It's like it didn't know that it's a date time UTC format date time. Let's say if I did this. What does that give up? So all the names are the same, I guess. So look at the weather forecast that's coming from Oh, crazy. Time offset. Oh, it's the daytime offset. So this is using some code generators in the client. Whoa, crazy. Just looking at what it generated. Swagger client. client with a lowercase s but if that's generated let's say I created a new oh I see that would oh interesting so the goal of it is to take a default blazer app and try to use the connected services or service reference to the swagger definition and then consume that in a mobile app and do some code sharing change oh 
I see. So if I delete this here. Okay, so if I did... Uh... Hmm. I did... Delete that file. Okay, so let's say I did save as. I call this weather swagger. Okay, and then I come back and I do add service reference. Add a new one. File here okay oh interesting so provide namespace for the generated code that do I was kind of curious if that would be uh if it uses the name of it or something It's still there, like creates the names because it knows the names, and this would be now in weather swagger client. <laughs> weather client. Okay. So that's it. Uh, so I could just rename this to can't rename that. We so if we came in and we said, okay, this is all new to me. So if I said this is my weather API thing. Then if I go into my add service reference, delete that, add a new one, I could point, pinpoint it at a URL, or I could tap on that. This adds an open API generate. Save. Compile it. Then Does it create a partial class is the question. It does. So then what you could do is, oh, that's genius. So you could say, okay, well now what we're gonna do is we already have this. This is gonna be a public partial class. We no longer need out of here. Boop. This. Perfect. So then we still have the Fahrenheit F. Oh, I see. So I think that is bad because. As a. Temperature F in it. So what you would want to do is do a. JSON on that, which is actually correct. Because you don't need that because it's, it's only a get it's not even a set and you're never going to get it and if i go into the weather api now i can delete this just gets it uh string string Intro. Object. That's an object. This is a string, but it's not really a string. If I go back into my weather forecast, my API client is generated but hidden from me. It is a daytime. Oh, date. So how come if it's a daytime offset, if I go into my razor model. This is a daytime offset.
what was it before? Date time. Interesting. So that makes it a daytime offset. So. Date dot date. Not too short. Okay, so we have our date. Uh, let's see if this looks like a date should be a date time. So uh, I don't think you can mess with the code gen uh, here because it will regenerate it. The question becomes in the schema, I don't think you can specify anything there. So I think that what's happening is date time defaults to being a date time offset. So. Like in our demo, we could make it by default a daytime offset, and then this would work, obviously. Okay. But I think what you would do, by the way, is I would come in and probably, if I was doing this demo, because it's not from file new, I would do public string display date, like this. And then I would do like this would be daytime offset. And then this would be also. So we have a it's it's not gonna be file new demo, right? It's gonna be like here's like a setup and here's it running. And this could be date dot too short. Date dot date dot short date string. Like that. Okay, and then in our razor file, we'll have it not do that because that's kind of bad anyways. Display date, boom. So if I rerun this app now, let's go ahead and shut this down. Uh, let's close. Okay, so we have, we got it swagger definition. We imported that into Visual Studio and we've changed around a few things because we've cleaned up the schema, because the schema was not ignoring. So I think that's a bug in their template. Like that should have JSON ignore by default in that template, because you would never want to return that from the server. You could just do it locally, but maybe. All right, so we open this, fetch data, boom. So this is using a client that's generated for us now. And so what we should be able to do is let's say we go into our mobile app here now what we'll want to do is let's add a new item main view model public I notify property changed. I wish there was a something built in. Oh. That. So then the idea is that we'll have some view model and like in a demo, what we'll wanna do is come in and say, I'm gonna add a dependency to this shared project now. Boom. And let's do void on property changed what's that thing compiler what's that thing called for small apps just use the view as a view model is that evil ah. you could good question yeah might make it easier to understand <laughs> well, I can ask him what he would like, but I do like this. Uh, binding context equals this. Shh, don't tell anyone. Get all this stuff because the default. The cool part is that, by the way, like, so a content page, if you look at it, is a templated page. If you go in further, it's a page, which then 
actually is a visual element and the visual element go to definition as an animation where's it at navigable element element i'll keep going bindable object great i notify property changed it's right there it's in there right and there's a protected virtual on property change. So I think here, if I did, can I call? I don't even need to, right? I should be able to do like. So they're actually, it's actually in here. Yeah, pretty cool, right? So what I should be able to do is like, um, public bool is busy. This is all I really need. So I need is busy and then and this will probably be actually easier to explain. Um, What there is an is busy already? Shut your face. <laughs> Hello. What's it where's is busy at? Oh, I'm so intrigued. Age. Busy. Oh whoa 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 who? What is this? What is this beauty? Is busy. Oh, oh I love it. I don't even need that. This is amazing. Oh, it is busy. It, it updates it on there. Oh my goodness. That's so... What? I did not know that. No, I did not know. I did not know. I did not know. I did not know. So this is great. Wow. That's rad. Okay, so... um, Holy smokes. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um. I guess I just do a public command. I don't even need that. So at least do a little bit here. Public command. Get other command. Async task get cute get weather. Comment at com and I can just do get weather command equal. You get weather. There we go. Wait. All right. So when we're in here, I think what we would want to do is I can say like uh, we also have an observable collection. So ob public observable collection of weather forecast. that the shared item i like that cool get weather so Let me 
my goodness, I'm so excited. So then we can just say um, items equals new observable collection. Then we can say binding context equals this. I'm just gonna shove all my code in my page from now on. I'm so excited about all of this. Never again, no more view models. Everything in the page. Everything in the page. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Put it all in there. Uh, all right, cool. Um, Shove it in the page. Um, weather API client. All right, so what I can do here is I could say, I could say like uh, weather, and then I'll say client. Uh, okay. The idea is you could write some code, right? You can say, okay, so what we're gonna do is now we're gonna create a new API client, right? And this takes in a interesting, base URL. So what we're gonna need to do is go into uh, let's see, I need to get the API. First, Xamarin app. Local ho. I guess the port that we're running on is going to be. be HTTPS. It's kind of cool. You can just like show that off. Go. I guess I could just put this fine, but so I do have to give it an HTTP client. So I guess here I'd give it a base URL and then I'd give it like a new HTTP client. Okay. Take anything else? It takes in a, that's it. All right, now I'm excited. Okay, so then I should be able to say client dot weather forecast async. Oh. Beautiful. Bar. I could say for each var item in items. Well, I'll wait on that, of course. I should just be able to come in and say, whoop up. Wow, nice. So then what we should be able to do here is say, Display alert error. Something. So the idea here is like if you were demoing this, what you could do on stage is basically write this two lines of code, like you have a weather API client, you knew it up, you call these this line of code here, done. Would be the idea. Now let us set that as my startup project. I'm curious if this compiles. So we have this binding here. Bam. Let us boot it up. Yeah, the Android X migration. Hey, uh, Harness TV, welcome to the stream. We're working on some cool app stuff <laughs> uh, over here. I'm excited. I, I'm. This thing is all auto-generated. This is so flipping cool over here. All that's cool. Yeah, I'm super duper excited. 
because we use this open API, Swagger JSON to generate our API client, which will do all the heavy lifting, lifting for us. Let's put this on to our... Well, Prime, thanks for hanging in. I'm sorry that it took so long to get everything up and running, but now we're going, so it's all happening. Um, I do apologize for everything, but thanks for hanging out. Um, of course, this will be recorded for later, so you can always check it out. I'll put it on my YouTube eventually, too. But, of course, it'll be on Twitch for a few, like, a few, I think, 60 days or something. So, give that a look. See you, Prime. Have a good night. Or good sleep, I guess, actually. I want onto my emulator. Ah, emulators. Oh, there it goes. I was like, uh, oh, oh, emulators. So, waiting for the emulator. So, let us. Phone is starting detecting packages. I have faith in you. There's a tap bar down there. Doing. Stop it, Google. So funny. That's a lot. That's actually that's actually pretty pretty quick. A lot faster than I thought it was gonna be. Target devices x86. Removed that old runtime. Oh, because I got a new runtime. Got a new run. Zip aligning and installing. Offline, not <laughs> online. Offline, are you offline, bro? Hot reloaded up. Oh. Ooh. Oh, I need to update. Oh, that's weird. All right, let's uh, update those nougats. Let's update. I would have figured that this one would include that new version. Definitely. All right. Freddie asks, what's the advantage of the code behind as a view model? Um, the only advantage here is that I'm being lazy and not putting it in a separate file. So there's no real advantage. The disadvantage is that it's highly untestable. So that is one thing that is there. Now, ideally, we could create a... Um, a view model in this shared code down here that actually does everything for us. And maybe I'll do that. He's like, it would need a command or something, but you could create like an extension method that, um, I, I kind of need to think about how we would easily sort of figure out how to display the UI. Cause if you look at the razor file here, 
what this does is it goes and it gets a bunch of items when it starts up right here and then it just loops through them and displays them when you when you after you load so I need to think about how to best like I want to make the demo really really easy right like there's an app that starts up and you have a main page inside of here and then you're gonna have a button that you can press on stuff right um so that would be the ideal scenario so there's not any dependencies or any other stuff like here it is just easy kind of working with some default code so it's just one page it's like a singular page demo is the idea but I guess you could do like this. Right now we're just using the weather model, weather client to get the, oh, it's nice that you can deserialize it. I'm curious if it would bring in soft object on. I have to bring in some dependent. Yeah, because like if I'm doing a demo, I can be like, okay, here's this weather API run in Blazor, and then I open it up, add it, here's the forecast stuff, bingo bango, we can comment out the weather forecast. Boom. Oh, let's put this in a rerun the app. It works great, right? Um, this thing actually creates like, you know, fetch data. This could be simplified though. Even make it easier. Weather forecast. Yeah, I kind of need to talk to Hunter about it though, but yeah. So yeah, let's, um, Initializing. Oh, there's nothing on the page. Uh, let's put a button on there. X. And then let's put in a list of you. Oops. I was thinking like, what's the absolute uh, template? Say like a cell. Look at the weather forecast. As a display date and a temperature parent. Oh yeah. So what could we do in here? Um, do true play out. Uh, what does a blazer app look like? Eight. The data grid, I see. So here we could do like play date. Start there. And then we could put this all into a grid here. We have a of get weather. No binding. So what I called it, I called it.
weather command. Something has gone handshake failed. SSL handshake. Wonder if if heard the wrong API. I don't actually know what the base Oh, um uh, oh interesting. Oh oh huh. Oh it's not on HT. Got it. So if that's the case, darn it. We're going to have to do some. Uh, logs, slash Xamarin, we're going to need to. I thought I configured it to be HTTP. By default, but I guess not. Uh, network. Network security. Add a new source, add new folder, add small file, network. Up here, done. So, that's good. We're just going to support that protocol. That's good. This. <laughs> I fear packages. Is, is it because, Matthew, that you publish so many packages? On the components team, that it's fearful. I mean, pretty. That's a lot of packages. Uh, access network state. ETPS. So let's do it on iOS. Where's it at? Where's the gimme everything? Yeah, that one. That one. Five bits. Just want to throw some love to the code. Good vibes to the compiler. Yeah, good, good love. Uh, I like it. Ooh, you know what else we can do? We can go to tools. Snippet manager. Do I have the? Can do what happened today what happened they went 10 rocks appeared 33 on july 26 fantastic they 
here. Oh, weird. Five. Five whole bits. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. All the wrong. Boop. There you go. Uh, Joseph Scott says, but would you, why would you want C sharp on the web? Uh, well, not really. I mean, Donut Core this is. This is the last of my bits. Oh no, last of the bits? Thanks, Lashline. Appreciate that. I mean, Donut Core is extremely s small, so, um, if you look at it. Uh, w, and six. There you go. Boom. That's true. Why would you want JavaScript? It's also a big framework. <laughs> it takes a lot of stuff. I think because if you go to dot dot net and you tap on web, you go to the performance, you can see the requests and the tech power and stuff. There's ASP core. Boom, right there. Power. Okay, so what did we just discover? HTTPS stuff. That should work. Let's see. Oh, the the Blazor stuff. I mean, the Blazor stuff is a completely different paradigm for client side sort of applications in the web and on desktop in different scenarios that you may want. So instead of running JavaScript on C sharp, and the interpreter is actually extremely fast and extremely small. So the payload is surprisingly pretty small in general with yeah the, the mono uh, WebAssembly. And the idea is WebAssembly can really run just about anything. The new world, the wild, wild west. west. There you go, Rust, Go, C++, I mean any of them really, but. All right, let's see, do, 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 do. Uh. Change that stuff there. That's good. So ideally now, we're still running here. Kind of crazy. I thought that it would be. Yeah, there it is. Summary. If that Wazi, Wazi, WebAssembly out of the browser. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you'd technically put WebAssembly anywhere, right? Yes. Should work this time. That's the base here. Ooh, okay, cool. That did work. And that's beautiful. Look at that beauty right there. All right, so, uh, okay. That's pretty much it. The grid, I'd probably want an activity. Oh, 
it's just a little tiny little spinner oh, it just adds them over and over and over again uh okay cool pretty minimal question is how could we make it look better Oh, uh, that's nice. We're gonna have an icon on there too, so that would be scorching. That's so up high and low. So this should really be like a Come on. Come on. I just put this on a Seems too big. Hmm. Kinda guess what that looks like. Kinda curious, like what? So, hmm. Hmm. 
It is dope. It is super fresh. It is <laughs> super fresh. Yeah, so I think this is like pretty good. It's like under 40 lines. I mean, we're going to put an image in here at some point. Goes and gets it. I mean, it gives an example of how easy it is. Like, get the weather, make the call. You don't have to deserialize, do anything, whatever. It's just boom. When do you use list view versus bindable layout? Um, well, list view has a scroll view built in. It also uh, has recycling on it. So here, for instance, I can put recycle. Who's in my mind today? It's a Friday. Also has caching strategy. There we go. To recycle the elements. So it'll automatically cache all the cells. So gives you a huge performance boost um, inside of there. Pretty rad. Um, yeah, the other thing that we could do too is like, let's say I put this into a... Bu -bu 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 -bu. Yeah, so that's the biggest difference. So you you really only want to use a bindable, um, where's it at? The bindable layout in certain instances. Maybe you just have a few items that need to go one direction or inside of a list view because you can't really use a list view inside of a list view. So you might just want to kind of find that away, um, which would be ideal. So, but here you could definitely like, for instance, like for instance, inside a, well, even here in this, this would be probably a collection view. And like this thing would, you could make this a bindable thing, but you could also just make this in either of these work, but. Um, no, oh. hey, take this image. Idiot. So yeah, maybe it's like, instead of putting this here, you're like, oh, I'm going to show how to do this thing. We'll hit refresh. We'll get rid of that. Hit the refresh. Spinner. See a spinner. Boom. We get the weather. Boom. Good. And then it has some weather in it. Cool. They want to bring in like pancake. Oh yeah, I could see like bindable layout and flex layouts, dynamic grids, stuff like that being super useful. So let's I want it. Have like a little icon there, like a date, an icon. Did like a a grid, and here, for instance, I could put oh. all right. 
cool. And then inside of here, what we could do is like wrap. Put like here. Altering form. A little icon in there. Back probably. What you could do. Reloads under Bam. This will be like an icon in the swell. That could be. Nice. Why not rows instead of nesting stacks? Because then I have to have more code. <laughs> I, I like to cheat it. Like this is kind of like, if I'm thinking of a demo, the, when you end up having to do like columns and rows, like it ends up being a lot of code on the screen. But here it's very much like, hey, I have a frame and this is the circle. I'm gonna put a grid with three columns that are gonna split it three ways. I have a display date, I have the summary in the middle, I have the stack layout. Um, that's gonna just put the temperatures on top of it, boom. Um, you could have a horizontal stack. You could have a horizontal stack. Good. That might be, try that. Let's try it. That'd probably be, I guess that would be better, right? Grid life. Um, yeah, let's just try that. Okay, so, I mean, cause that could be nice. This one does have the, so. I like less code. I'm a big fan of less code. Let's see if that looks the same. If so, we'll go with it. Cause I'm about it. So. Hmm. To be end center and expand. Oh, that would be center. This one will be horizontal. Oops. Boom. I think this one would be. It does, yeah, yeah, tr true. Stack layouts do definitely do it. The question is, and probably this is an. The question is, yeah, is this an easier to read stack layout or is the grid easier to understand? Okay, I have a horizontal stack layout and I have these, you know, items inside of it. 
that becomes a question. This is a demo front. This looks like it's more code fits on the screen, right? And then like what you could do is up here, we could have like, uh, comment this out. So you could start and you could basically say, like, here's my app, right? And then here's this. And you're like, whoa, cool. Like I have this app and uh, I have a button at the bottom. I can hit get weather. Okay, well, you know, so now we're hitting our same backend that our Blazor application is hitting. We're sharing code between our Blazor application using our web API from ASP.NET core. And then you can say, okay, now like what's great here is that I can start to flesh out this user interface. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a toolbar item up top and get rid of that button at the bottom. I don't really like that. Go, comment that out, hit debug and hit save. It's gonna refresh my content here. Boop. There we go. Now we have the refresh at the top. And then you could do something like, um, you know, you could have like a separator color. You could, you could do something like, I'm thinking demo, right? default and you're like oh man like whoever wrote this ui for me left in this beautiful red uh is there a reason to use a um there's no reason like oh there's this red separator why is that there like oh don't worry just do none right uh there's no reason to use the list view over a collection view necessarily think that yeah it doesn't really matter I mean you could make it so it's like all the items but I think like this is just like a very simple easy to demo to understand right swelter so nine degrees Fahrenheit is not warm 127 degrees Fahrenheit that is I think what you'll end up doing is like change this out to a image instead of the summary, basically. But that's cool. So like if we, it's a weltering. Yeah. I think it just randomly generates words though. So. so let's see here. So this looks pretty good. Beautiful, 39. Yeah, I think that you could definitely probably change these a little bit. So like, yeah, font size. Looks good. Pretty easy code to understand. There's some labels in there. Yeah. I like this. I like that there's a weather. Where does this? I think here, let's go ahead and remove this. And let's go into our weather API. Open this up. Open. Put that in there. Puts it right in there. Pressing it. We probably don't want to put it there then. Let me say add. So the the whole goal, right, is that we come in. We start off the demo like this, basically. And the demo comes in and says, hey, we have this Blazor application, right? And it's doing this thing. Comes in here, styles. We could have styles. Do we want styles though? 
medium. Eh, like so minimal, but like, I think the nice thing is that they could just change this to large and be like, oh, it's a large now, right? So. So then you come in, you say add, add service reference, add a new one. Could have default styles. I think there are default styles actually. I say browse. I'm saying, oh, I'm going to find this code file right here. Oh, it's not here. There we go. Let's say okay. That adds it as a link. Just up a directory. That's cool. Nice. Then now we go in and we say, oh, we have duplicate data because it's generated this model for us. So we don't no longer need this. There we go. Now we have that JSON ignore, which is still in there. Rerun it, and it's like, oh, let's go into our mobile app. Like, we're gonna come into this thing, and this is what we need to do. That's pretty good. There it is. Hey, -o. <laughs> this is the best place to go see the coolest demos. Uh, yeah, so, okay. I, okay I'm, gonna, I'm walking through it here, okay? So, this is what I'm kind of walking through. I'm, I'm gonna walk through the demo. So here's the demo, okay? Let me go ahead and back it up. I'm gonna back it up here and think about this demo and what code we wanna write. So I did file new Blazor app. So the idea here is I go, oh, okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I have a Blazor app. Control C out of this. Exit out of that. I come in and I say, hey, I have close everything. Start from scratch. I come in and I say, uh, let me go ahead and clear out this here. And in fact, I could probably really streamline this too. Okay, so we come in here and we say, okay, cool. So I come in, here's the demo. And I'm gonna, I did a file new Blazor application. We walk through the Blazor application. Whoa, cool. Like we have this, you know, for weather forecast. That's cool. It has a date, a temperature in, in Celsius, a summer uh, summary. And then it has a, a API controller here. So here's my API controller with my logger. And it, you know, it does a get, it just, you know, this will call a real service at some point, but I'm gonna do the thing. And then, uh, let's see, run this app. Okay. Laser.boot. It does, yeah. Well, it got me because it was like, it was like blazing hot and it was like 30 degrees or something. I'm like, I. It hurts, it hurts me inside. Like, I like that it's random, but that it's like terrible, so. Also, we found out something. Let me show you what happens here. So in these default Blazor templates, when you, we added swagger to it um, in general. And the problem is this temperature F isn't JSON ignored. So this actually gets output in the swagger definition. So I added the JSON ignore to it because it's calculated, you don't really wanna Output it. You could calculate it yourself. To my thought, at least, if you own this. Um, so now we're running this puppy, and here's our app. And we're like, whoa, cool! All right, we have this great Blazor app. It can go. It can go fetch the data, and you know, on this thing, what we have is uh, a Swagger definition. So I just do slash Swagger. What we can see here is that I have a, a Swagger definition uh, over here. I can do a get, try it out. And um, when I execute this, this is gonna go pull back that data that we saw. Now there's a, a Swagger JSON file and that, that's kind of what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that link uh, and we're gonna call it uh, weather API.json and replace that there. This should be our good one. And then I'm gonna say, okay, well, so now what we wanna do is we wanna put this, this code uh, into a mobile application 
Now we can use and leverage the tooling here. And what we can do is we can say add, we're gonna reuse this model, but let's actually create a full HTTP client that can help us call this code from any app, including a Blazor app. So I'm gonna add a new service reference, add a new open API service, and we're just gonna point it at that file over here. So there it is, weather API. Now I could have given the project, the URL, but I'm just gonna give it the, the file API. What this is gonna do is gonna go off and uh, bring in and generate a client for me. So if I go to compile this, um, it's gonna not only generate a client, but it's gonna generate, um, it's gonna generate the class for me. So we're gonna see that there's duplicate data here. So this is a partial class, so we can go ahead and just uh, comment this out. There we go. Uh, and if we were to go into our forecast controller and look at our code that was generated, over here, we'll see that there's two. There's a weather API client that was generated for us. This is all the code that's auto-generated to handle HTTP caching and headers and JSON, like there's tons of code. Cool. So what's great is that I can now add a Xamarin application. So I'll go over here, right here, mobile app, a little bit zoomed in, there we go. And we have an Android app and an iOS app, and we're using cross-platform XAML with Xamarin Forms uh, to go ahead and create a, an application. So let's bring in that shared code. And now everything that I generated will now be available in my Xamarin app. So now what I need to do is just call that method basically. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a command that I can call from the UI, a list of items, and a base URL that I'm gonna communicate on, right? So let's go ahead and call that. So I'm gonna say var client, I'm gonna say new uh, weather API client give the base URL and a new HTTP client. There we go. And then I can say var items equals client await client dot uh, weather forecast async, get them. And I'll say for each var item in items, then I'm gonna add it to my list. There we go, cool. And now what we've done is We've gone ahead and reused all of the logic, all the JSON deserialization, things like this, blah, 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 back and forth. And we can cut, talk through this a little bit, what it's doing, does it pop up? And now we just need the user interface. So here um, we have our user interface, blah, 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 blah. And we can pretty this up, but we have a, a list view that's gonna bind to that items that you just saw. And then we're gonna output those labels here. And what I can do is go over to my Android application, set that as my startup, go ahead and deploy it to my Android emulator. Now remember my backend is still running here, which is pretty cool, including my Blazor app. And let's see here, deploy to my device. Maybe you already have it deployed. No, you wouldn't have it deployed already, but debug. Yeah, you want to debug because now we're debugging. Boom, 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 boom. Awesome. So our application's booting up. On my slow emulator. Come on. There we go. We got a nice little title bar. We can hit get weather. It's gonna go off, it's gonna call our backend. We can see it's doing stuff back over here. Doing a get, should return to us any moment. There we go. Now we have all of our weather, which is really awesome. Now also with Xamarin, we have great uh, hot reloading of the, the user interface. So maybe I don't want this button at the bottom. So let's comment that out. Now let's go up to the top here. Maybe I wanna add a toolbar item. So we'll comment that back in. There we go, hit save. Is gonna go ahead and push those changes over and uh, to our page. Now we have a refresh button up top. So if I go ahead and tap that, we actually just now get more items down here, which is pretty cool. But I can do other things, like maybe I wanna make this, uh, you know, this date uh, large. Go ahead and save it. So push it over and it remains a state and boom. Now we have really large titles and we also have images. So I could swap that to an image, blah, 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 blah. And now we, literally recreated an entire app for mobile for iOS and Android and you know, 20 lines of code and 50 lines of XAML and done. Boom. That's the demo.
amazing. <sighs> no, that was, uh, I think the, this is the Glenn from the ASP.net team. <laughs> different Glenn, but that is a, that is a different Glenn. Cool. That's it. We're done. Three hours. Actually, I can't believe I finished it seeing I started an hour and a half late. Pretty ridiculous. So, undo this. Nice. That's a good demo. That's a good demo. Very simple. I like it. All right, cool. Um, voice. Voice. I'm way up. I feel blessed. E method. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. So let us go ahead and I'm going to go do a few things here and make sure that I have a, a JSON ignore, get ignore file. Some people dream of success while you're going to wake up and work hard at it. Nothing, Nothing is, is impossible. impossible. Nothing is impossible. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Glenn, thank you so much for the subscription. You only get one a month, and you gave it to me, and I love you so much. Of course, I'll make a donation out to the Duke Langer Foundation of the beautiful Dukes of the world. Um, I did a... I was really happy last night. I was... Uh, my partner was walking in, and she's like, what are you up to? And I was like, I'm just writing this blog post. And then she just saw this gif of me just working on this, you know, circles and monkeys and working on the Duke Langers. <laughs> And she's like, that's awesome. I'm just like going in. I was like, we just doing stuff and da 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 da. Oop. So cool. Yeah. That was me last night at like 11 p.m. Then Luce edited it like a minute later. It was amazing. So let's add this to source control. Git. Done. Ship this over to. I guess you could even just open, they could have this open, and then I could put in some dummy data too, probably. Yeah, let's see if I do Xamarin. Yeah, I'm super behind too. I felt pretty bad because I was like, I had this, I've been wanting to do this blog post for like ever. And then I like, just, like, oh, I feel like I failed. Let's put that in there. What does? See how much they want to do that. At least it gives a button there so you can kind of see the item. It's kind of nice, actually. Okay. So, uh, did I add it to this thing? Oh, um, create. Ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. Definitely the only thing that's in there. Uh, I didn't do the thing where I do the thing. Oh, oh, there we go. Publish to GitHub. Perfect. Laser. SP.net for Xamarin. Not standard. Uh, well, I hope that my get ignored just got picked up. What's the namespace for D colon? Great question. Uh, the namespace for D colon, which is a design time attribute, is the same as 
was using like WPF and other ones. So there's this, uh, well, this is our, our des Xamarin Forms design, but it comes from this ignorable one. So it's a special Xamarin Forms design attribute. So you can see here, there's the XMLNS default and then slash design. It's a special attribute that tells the previewer uh, how to, what, what to look at. It looks at the D colon first. So here, for instance, I have a bunch of design time items in an array, so it picks those up. If I didn't have that, then it would not be able to, it would, it would look at this item source and now it's telling me it's a duplicate. But since I have the D colon, it's like a whole separate entity, but I could do something like D colon background color equals red. And then you don't even need to save it, I guess, but just shows up there. I'm way up. I feel blessed. I think just doing something. Ant anti, uh, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Cool. Um, all right. Is that code up on GitHub? And here you can, um, I I'll, I'll put this in the chat. Oh, I closed the chat room. Better together. All right, uh, oh, that definitely is there. Okay, cool. Perfect. Perfect. All right, cool. We did it. We did it. After an hour and a half of installing and messing up my Visual Studio installer, we totally did it. I have a super slick demo. I'm really excited about that. Now it's time to get feedback from the hunter himself and see what he thinks of what I've done or if he's disgusted with my work. Um, we shall see. That means it got presented to the big, the big man, uh, in charge of lots of stuff. So crushed it, code crushed. It should also read that I crushed it from 2013 to present. A few photos of Penny, bam. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I had to meet with Mr. Hunter twice this week, twice. My goodness. So there's that. So yeah. All right, we did it. We did it, people. It totally happened. What a great day for everybody involved that we actually wrote code and it worked. Uh, now I just have to see if it's exactly what um, we want or not and kind of run through it a few times. I do like the auto code generation stuff inside of there. I was like, that's cool. I was like, oh, I didn't even know that existed. So you know, good old tooling, good old IDEs. That's what they're there for. Um, all right, cool. Let's see, we're gonna get out of here. Uh, but who is online? Is anybody online? Who's Chris Gonzalez? Gonzalez. Hmm, doing Uno development. First time streamer, whoa. Cool. Go raid him, see what he's doing. Go do that, let's see. Oh, first time streamer, first. Let's go, uh, let's go shake it up. Yeah, let's do it. All right, uh, well, thanks everyone for tuning in and being awesome. Yeah, we shall see, all right. Is it, is it first time mobile? First time Xamarin, first time Umo, oh no, first time Streaming. That should be a good variety. We'll see what happens. All right. Well, okay. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We're going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for a great time. I'm very excited. Hopefully we'll get it out there. Um, all right, we're going to roll the credits and thanks everyone for tuning in. I'll see you next week back with Mr. John Galloway earlier in the week and then more handsome informs later on. So then cheers. Welcome everyone.